Scenario of Human Extinction What Awaits Us Welcome to the Eye of Truth It is estimated that the human race was born several million years ago. At that time, we were not superior to other species, and for a long time, we were in a position to be preyed upon. However, we were able to build a highly advanced civilization without becoming extinct like the dinosaurs. As members of the human race, have you ever thought about what kind of future awaits us? In the last video, I tried to speculate about the future if the human race had developed smoothly without any disasters. However, we know that a gap exists between ideals and reality. From now on, events that degenerate the civilization of humanity or events that lead to the extinction of the human race may occur. This time, I would like to look at the latter scenario of human extinction. It may be a heavy theme, but there are scenarios that we can avoid depending on us, so please watch this video until the end as a preparation for knowledge to avoid a gloomy future. Dr. Stephen Hawking, who passed away in 2018, believed that meteorite impacts were the greatest threat to humanity and always said, the only way for humanity to survive forever is through space migration. This is because, when we look at the history of the Earth over a long span of millions of years, the probability of the meteorite event that wiped out the dinosaurs occurring again in the future is 100%. However, there is also an opposing view to Dr. Hawking's opinion, which is that even if the meteorite event that wiped out the dinosaurs were to occur again, modern humanity with advanced science and technology could avoid the extinction of the species. Which of these opinions is correct? I think that by looking at one event that occurred in the solar system, the answer will come out. In 1994, a collision event caused by a comet occurred on Jupiter. The process of the collision was captured by NASA's Hubble Space Telescope and the Jupiter probe Galileo, and humanity saw for the first time the phenomenon of a planet and comet colliding. These comets were not one lump, but a group of comets with a diameter of about 10 kilometers consisting of many small comets. The largest comet among them had a diameter of only 2 kilometers. However, the collision continued for several days, and the largest collision formed a diameter of about 12,000 kilometers impact mark and a 7,500 kilometer mushroom cloud on the surface of Jupiter. The damage to Jupiter from this collision event is not just these impact marks, and it is inferred that the entire planet's environment also underwent a drastic change. If a collision event of the same scale occurred on Earth, it goes without saying that no matter what technology present-day humanity possesses, we would not be able to avoid the extinction of the species. Of course, it is considered very unlikely for a collision event of this scale to occur on Earth, which has only 1 3 of the mass of Jupiter. However, even if the Earth itself is not destroyed, a collision of a certain scale can greatly change the environment of the Earth. It is said that the reason dinosaurs became extinct 66 million years ago was not the collision itself, but the climate change that occurred on Earth after the collision. Therefore, for us humans who are very vulnerable to changes in the environment, meteorite collisions are very dangerous. Can current human technology prevent meteorite collisions? NASA's Asteroid Terrestrial Impact Last Alert System Atlas is able to detect asteroids and other small celestial bodies passing near the Earth from a few weeks to a few days in advance. However, the size of the meteorite in the Chelyabinsk meteorite event that I mentioned in the previous video can only be detected by Atlas one day before the collision. This meteorite did not cause any serious damage because it exploded in the air for unknown reasons, but if it had collided with the surface, it is speculated that the entire state of Chelyabinsk which has a population of 3.6 million, would have been wiped out. Even if Atlas had detected it one day in advance, it would be impossible for any country to completely evacuate more than 3 million residents in just one day. Moreover, the meteorite that fell on Chelyabins could not be detected by any mechanism in advance. Furthermore, the missiles currently owned by humans are not yet at a level where they can destroy or change the orbit of a meteorite. Therefore, we reach a very despairing conclusion that if a meteorite event similar to the one that wiped out the dinosaurs were to attack current humans again, we can do nothing but wait. Of course, 
the probability of such a meteorite event occurring within the 100-year lifespan of an individual human is quite low, so there is no need for individuals to worry too much. However, from the perspective of the human species over a long span of time, a meteorite event that destroys civilization is certain to occur in the future. If humans have reached level 2 or higher in civilization before that happens, they may be able to survive. But if a meteorite comes before they reach type 2 civilization, it will be the end of humanity. If you are interested in space, you may have heard of the term supernova explosion. It is a large explosion that occurs at the end of the life of a massive star. In fact, the existence of a star is dependent on a balance. The entire star is strongly pulled inward by its own gravity. At the same time, the energy produced by nuclear fusion reactions taking place inside the star pushes the whole star outward. These two forces are in balance, so the star is in a stable state. However, when the hydrogen at the center of the star, which is the raw material for nuclear fusion reactions, is used up, the star continues to undergo nuclear fusion reactions using the hydrogen in the outer layers. At this time, the force pushing the entire star outward becomes stronger, and the balance that maintains the star's shape collapses. As a result, the size of the star expands several hundred times its original size. At this time, the star is called a red giant. Incidentally, it is believed that the Sun will become a red giant star about 50 billion years from now, and its size will swell to about 250 times its original size. At that time, the Earth will be swallowed up by the larger Sun and will disappear. Of course, if human beings still exist on Earth at that time, it will be the end of humanity. But the scenario of humanity's extinction that I will be talking about today will come sooner than that. Going back to the star, the nuclear fusion reactions of the red giant star will continue to progress. And after a few stages, when all the raw materials that can be used for nuclear fusion reactions run out, the balance of power that existed in the star will completely collapse, leaving only an inward-pulling force in the star. As a result, all matter in the outer layers of the star is pulled towards the core. At this time, the speed at which matter travels towards the core reaches a quarter of the speed of light. At the moment of collision with the core at such high speeds, a strong shockwave is generated due to the recoil, and an unimaginable scale explosion occurs. This explosion is a supernova explosion. The shockwave at this time throws most of the matter in the star into the surrounding space, and the light released reaches from end to end of the galaxy. In addition, intense radiation is also released simultaneously to the surroundings. The power of these cosmic rays is incredibly powerful, and depending on the scale of the supernova explosion, can affect a planet 3,000 light years away potentially causing devastating damage if there is life on that planet. Unfortunately, in the near future, a supernova explosion may occur near Earth. The star that will cause it is called Betelgeuse in the Orion constellation. Betelgeuse is about 550 light years away from Earth, and it is very bright, so we can observe it with the naked eye. Betelgeuse is also very large in size, with a radius about the same distance as from the Sun to Jupiter. In terms of mass, it is calculated to be about 20 times the mass of the Sun. Based on calculations from various observational data, it has been determined that Betelgeuse is in the final stages of its life. In other words, this star could have a supernova explosion at any time. In October 2019, the brightness of Betelgeuse suddenly dropped significantly, leading astronomers to think that it might be starting a supernova explosion but its brightness gradually returned to normal after the start of 2020. The cause of the decrease in brightness is not yet clear, but given that Betelgeuse is definitely in an unstable state, attention has been focused on its movements up to today. Some astronomers believe that Betelgeuse may have already had a supernova explosion, and that its light and cosmic rays are currently headed towards Earth. So, what would happen if the impact of Betelgeuse's supernova explosion reached Earth? First, a blue sun would appear in the sky. Its brightness is weaker than our sun, but it exceeds the brightness of the full moon. It can be seen both day and night. This will continue for two or three months, 
and it is said to take several years for it to completely disappear from the sky. As for the cosmic rays, if gamma rays produced by the supernova explosion directly hit Earth, the Earth's ozone layer will be destroyed. This allows harmful cosmic rays from space to fall to the surface of the Earth. Most organisms, including humans exposed to these cosmic rays, will become extinct. However, this is only if the gamma rays produced by the supernova explosion directly hit Earth. If the gamma rays released by Betelgeuse were directed somewhere else, the impact on Earth is not expected to be as significant. In addition, there is also the opinion that the supernova explosion of Betelgeuse will not occur for at least 100,000 years, so there is not much need for us living on Earth now to worry. It is estimated that there are 4 billion planets in the habitable zone in the Milky Way galaxy where we live. In addition, there are countless galaxies like the Milky Way in the universe. So statistically speaking, there should be an innumerable number of civilizations in the universe. Yet, for some reason, we have not found any trace of such civilizations. I explained this strange phenomenon in detail in the previous Fermi's Paradox video. But this time I would like to introduce one theory that may lead to the extinction of humanity. This is the Dark Forest Theory. It was proposed in the world-famous science fiction novel Three Body. According to this theory, there are many civilizations in the universe, but each of these civilizations prioritizes the development of their own civilization above all else. The development of a civilization requires resources, but the resources available in the universe are limited. Therefore, each civilization tries to secure as many resources as possible. As a result, the existence of other civilizations becomes the greatest obstacle to achieving their own development, and they become potential enemies to each other. In other words, the universe is like a dark forest. The many civilizations living in the forest are like hunters with guns, constantly hiding their presence and being on guard against their surroundings. If they discover each other's existence, it is difficult to communicate with each other due to differences in civilization race, and communication methods. Even if communication is possible, it is very difficult to determine whether the other is a friendly or hostile presence. Even if the other claims, I have no hostility toward you, it is impossible to know if that is true, and vice versa. Thinking about it this way, to me the other is a potentially dangerous presence, and to the other I am potentially dangerous. In this situation, where we cannot understand each other, and necessarily have to keep suspecting each other, if we take any action that could cause misunderstanding by the other, there is a possibility that our own civilization will be destroyed. In the case that we discover the existence of a civilization different from our own in such a precarious situation, the best course of action is to remove the threat by destroying that civilization with a preemptive attack before the other becomes aware of us. Most advanced civilizations in the universe understand this reasoning and try to hide their presence as much as possible while conducting their activities, but civilizations like Earth's, which act openly, will eventually be discovered and attacked by other civilizations. By the way, according to a paper published in the scientific journal Nature in 2021, it is estimated that there are 29 exoplanets outside the solar system that can catch radio waves sent from Earth to aliens. Therefore, it is highly likely that Earth's civilization has already been noticed by other civilizations. If other civilizations are really acting according to the Dark Forest theory, the reason the Earth has not yet been attacked is probably because our current civilization is not yet considered a threat. If in the distant future, humanity's civilization is able to use resources outside the Earth or outside the solar system, we may become targets of attack by other hunters in this dark forest. It's a somewhat dark theory, but it reflects the rules of nature. In the distant future, it may become a serious challenge that humanity as a whole must seriously address, rather than just a level of science fiction. In fact, even without major events like meteorites or supernova explosions occurring, it may be that humans are doomed to extinction as a species. This was suggested by an animal experiment. In the 1940s to 1970s, 
American zoologist John B. Calhoun conducted an experiment using mice. In brief, the experiment was designed to see what would happen if mice were given unlimited access to a large space, food and water, and were kept in an environment where they were prevented from getting sick and had no natural predators. Calhoun divided a space that could accommodate 3,480 mice into four rooms with free access and released four pairs of mice into each room. In other words, he observed the behavior patterns in mouse society of mice living in a paradise. As the saying mouse math suggests, mice proliferate vigorously if they have no danger and an abundance of food. In this case, the number of mice increased to over 600 after 300 days. From there, the pace of reproduction slowed, but gradually male mice began to engage in power struggles. In a room divided into four sections, the comfortable wealthy room with relatively low population density, where the stronger males ruled, and the poor room with a high concentration of mice, began to show variations in room density. In other words, a gap began to emerge among the mice. In the wealthy room, child rearing by females was actively carried out, and the child mortality rate remained at 50%. However, a big change occurred in the poor room. Some mice began to show aggressive behavior within the group, while others, like shut-ins in human terms, appeared. They did not reproduce and only slept, ate, and groomed themselves. In addition, some mice abandoned child-rearing due to a lack of space to make nests, leading to a child mortality rate exceeding 90%. Furthermore, mice displaying abnormal behavior such as mating with their own gender and failing to defend their territory became more prominent. More than 500 days after the start of the experiment, the increase in the number of individuals, which had reached a maximum of 2,200, finally stopped and began to decrease. Young mice showed no interest in reproduction or territory, and only lived for themselves. In that society, aging advanced, children were attacked by their mothers and driven out of the nest. Even though food was abundant, cannibalism also occurred. Despite the satisfactory given environmental conditions, a chaotic, hellish picture unfolded for some reason. On the 920th day, the last pregnancy was confirmed, but the child was not born, and on the 1780th day, the last male died and the number of mice became zero. The experiment, as its name Universe 25 suggests, was conducted 25 times on a different scale, but the number always reached a certain point stopped increasing, then decreased, and always ended at zero. Many opinions have been expressed that the terrifying results of this experiment may indicate the future of human society. Of course, it is not possible to simply compare or apply humans and mice to each other, but in modern human society we already see similar trends such as a gap society, declining birth rates, and declining desire among the young. Humans aim to make society convenient and ideal, but this direction is not necessarily wrong. This is because we must also develop science and technology to escape disasters such as meteorites and supernova explosions. However, I think that creating the paradise where those mice lived, which eliminated all threats such as meteorites, supernova explosions, and aliens, is only a transit point on the way to the road we are heading. While moving forward on this road, what important thing have we lost? If we consider this answer carefully now, it may still be possible to avoid the worst scenario. Thank you for watching.